Today's video covers the SAS administration tool. The SAS admin tool basically replaces ALM's site administration. On a SAS service, we don't give access to site admin as it is a number of very sensitive settings that would affect the service's security and reliability. The SAS admin tool replaces those functions, but also enhances administration with extra features. You access the admin tool via this link on the welcome page for your SAS service, and then log in. So this is the admin tool. There are a number of modules down the left-hand side and I'll touch in on each. Let's start with user management. This is where most administrators start. Here we see a list of users in the system and you have quite a number of functions shown by the toolbar icons along the top. To create a user, you click here on the add user icon. Two fields are mandatory. This one, of course, but also the email, because the admin tool has a number of functions that rely on a proper email address being attached to each user. Note that the password is not a mandatory field. If you fail to fill it in, the password will be blank and the authentication policy will not allow the user to log in. If you want the user to be able to log in directly, you must give him a password that complies with the authentication rules you have set. We'll cover the authentication rules very shortly. Note that it's very common for administrators to define a non-compliant password and ask the user to change it before they attempt to log on. This is good security practice as no one knows the password but the user himself. We'll cover the options that a user has to change their password later on in the video. Notice the send notification checkbox. When checked, emails are sent to the user with their username and password to announce that they are now users on the system. The admin tool adds three extra fields to each user. There is a flag which shows whether or not the account is locked because of too many failed logon attempts. There's also an authentication policy field which defines the rules that a user's password must comply with. As we can see in the authentication module, we can define one or more authentication policies and each has a set of comprehensive rules that you can enable and be tuned to meet your security needs. Two important rules to highlight are the ones that lock a user's account. These are here, where the user account is locked temporarily, and another one down the bottom where the user account is locked permanently. Both kick in after a certain number of failed consecutive login attempts within a certain period. The last user field to cover is the role which defines the user's role in the admin tool. This is not related to the user's role in a project. There are two built-in roles, customer admin and basic user. Customer admin can do anything. The basic user can do very little. When a basic user logs in, they see the My Settings module only. They can change their password, their full name, their email, their phone, but not much else. In role management, we can create a role which has permissions that sit between these two extremes. I've created a team leader role which can see everything, but which can't manage users except to unlock them, but which can create a project but not delete a project. Back in user management, once we've created a user-defined role, we can see that it's part of the list along with the built-in roles. Another way to create users is via bulk import. Click here and specify a file with comma separated values to load. Here we get to map the column headings in the file against the field names in user management. It's good practice to set the column headings in the file to be the same as these ones up here in the text. I'll just map this very last field. And as you'll notice, we have our send notifications checkbox just as before when we created a single user. As you can see, they're all created with a basic user role and with the current default default authentication policy. Another important function is to add users to projects. We'll see in a minute that you can do this from project management also. 
you can assign a single user to several projects at once using this link down in the details pane, or you can use this toolbar button at the top to assign a single user or indeed multiple users to a single project. I'll just select a couple of users with shift click and another one with control click for a discontinuous selection. Click the assign buttons and I can choose to assign these three users to whichever project I like. Notice that unlike in Site Admin, where you are simply assigning users to a project, here you are assigning users to a project, but also you have the ability to put those users inside groups inside the project, all in one operation. This project, like, other, like most projects, has some user-defined groups, and they appear here as well. I'll make this one an administrator and this one a tester and this one a viewer. I'll get a summary page and then I'll execute the changes. Notice the filters across the top. We can use an asterisk as a wildcard on the text fields. We also have a clear all filters button and near the funnel, we have an icon that provides advanced filtering options. We can add users from a list, picking and choosing them one by one. Or we can paste a list, perhaps cut from an Excel sheet, into the text box to quickly filter on a set of users to be, to be manipulated as a group. The unlock icon is important to mention. When a user contacts you and says that they can't log on, please unlock me, first check that they are indeed locked. Use the filters to find them quickly. Either way, recommend that they use the forgot password link, which I'll describe further on. With these two envelope icons, we can send emails to selected users. And with this one, we can send emails to every user in a particular project, or indeed to users in every project in every in a particular domain. Lastly, you can reset password. The way this works is that a very sh a short random password is generated that you can give to the user, but most likely will not comply with the authentication policy you've set. This is intentional as it's intended to be only a temporary password. Remind the user to change it before they try to log on. You might prefer to suggest that they use the forgot password feature instead. Next is the projects module. Here we can create a new domain or a new project in a domain, or if we're using an ALM edition, we can create a new template. Click on an existing project and we can see the project details in the right hand side. Here you can rename it. You can move it to a different domain using this pop-up list. You can enable or disable automail. If you're using ALM edition, you can see which template this project is linked to. And if this is a template template we're looking at, then here would be a hot link that enables us to link and delink projects from the template. In the toolbar, we can activate or deactivate the project, or we can enable or disable versioning. To create a project, you click on this icon and you decide where you want to create the project from. Should it be created from the contents of another project? Or as in this case, should it be an empty project? Rename the project. And we have these usual options here we're used to inside admin. And then we finish. And you'll notice that the project creation process will happen in the background and that you'll receive an email when it's complete and the project's ready for use. In user management, I mentioned that associating uses with a project can also be done here. We do it by selecting the users tab for a project. We can see which users are associated already and what groups they're in. And we can add users using this button here. And as before, we can decide which groups they should belong to in the project. In one operation. We've made several changes to the system, so this is a good time to look at the audit log module. This is another admin tool enhancement, and you can see that for a given date range, say from 
here to here, we can see everything is recorded. Users, projects, created, deleted, associated, etc. Use the filters across the top to find the right entry quickly. The usage report module shows either graphically or in a data grid the maximum number of concurrent users per day. We have filters for the period we're interested in, for the type of license, and for the domain we want to restrict the report to. This is historical, but the connected users module gives us a real-time view of who's connected to which project right now. You can do the usual site admin functions here. You can disconnect users and you can send messages. These are not emails, but messages that pop up in the notification area of the user's desktop. Lastly, the customer module shows a summary of the projects and the users that you have. The notification system is how SAS tells you about planned and even unplanned downtimes to your service. Here you can set a number of email addresses to be recipients for these notification messages. However, this is deprecated in the admin tool as now the SAS My Account portal is the best place to manage notifications and recipients. The license tab shows you your term end date and also, if appropriate for your service, any project limit that you might have. The SAS Information Pool, available from this link below the modules, takes you to a library of documents relevant to your service and also to some self-serve training. Also here is the report system, which replaces direct access to the site admin database and provides queries related to the whole ALM system, users and projects and last login times, to complement the project level reporting available in ALM itself. One last thing to cover are the features available to users to resolve login problems. Here on the admin tool logon page, we have a number of self-serve links to help users that don't require raising a case with administrators and all the time and effort that that can involve. First, we have the change password link. The user enters their password. And their current password. Note that the current password does not need to comply with the authentication policy. It may be non-compliant because it was just created or because the administrator used the reset password link, or perhaps it was compliant last week and the rules changed over the weekend and is now no, no longer compliant. Either way, it doesn't matter. The current password is not tested against the password policy. The new password that it set is in fact tested, however, and if it doesn't comply, then the user gets a message indicating what rules failed to guide him to create a more compliant password. Alternatively, they can use the forgot password link. They don't even need to know their current password for this. The user fills in their login name and their email address, and they prove they're not a robot by interpreting the capture. The system then sends an email to them with a link in it that enables them to come back and reset their password to whatever they want. The capture sometimes is a little frustrating for users. Sometimes the characters are hard to interpret. When that happens to me, I simply enter something that is not correct. It tells me it's not correct. And then it rolls the dice again, and I get a set of characters that are probably much easier to interpret. Lastly, it's good to note that the capture that's displayed is not case sensitive. Lastly, there's help if the user has forgotten their username. They can enter their email address and again enter the capture and an email will be sent with the username associated with that email address. That's it. The SAS admin tool is a replacement for normal site admin, but with extra features to make administration of a SAS ALM service easier and more secure.